getting right into it, a lot of people right now have been asking us what's going on with inventory. And obviously everybody knows it's because of the microchips. We hear that all the time, but I don't think people actually understand the scenario that brought us to where we at, where we're at right now. And when it comes to microchips, the exact scenario and the reason that we're in this issue of a, a low inventory, high demand, um, obviously is because of the pandemic. And when you look at, you know, March of 2020, March, April, May, somewhere around there, when that pandemic hit, manufacturers started to cut production of vehicles because they didn't anticipate the demand for vehicles being strong because of the pandemic. At the same time, consumer electronic spending increased tremendously. People were at home, things like um, laptops, video games, phones, things like that. They all use similar microchips to what cars have. And the biggest thing to remember too, it's not one microchip per car. These cars have hundreds, if not thousands of microchips, depending upon how uh, well equipped these vehicles are. The more equipment in them, the more technology, the more microchips that it takes. That's also part of the problem. They take a bunch of microchips. Then it also takes a really long time for these things to be built. So you're talking about two to three month lead time to make a microchip. It takes two to three months to make a microchip. So you really need to be prepped and ready for these things um, in advance. There's not a lot of factories at all that make microchips. So it's kind of like car manufacturers beholden to these very few amount of factories. So the output is can definitely be hurt by something like this pandemic and obviously was. They're located in Asia. It's just when they started realizing, okay, the, the car industry is bouncing back a little bit faster than we anticipated. And then it picked up steam and then it took off. They had to start placing orders for these chips. Now, normal lead time might be two to three months, but because of consumer electronic spending, these microchips were already, you know, accounted for. So they had these pre-orders in. Now the new car manufacturers need to wait extremely long lead times, which is kind of what we're in right now, upwards of 12 to 15 months lead time when they order these chips. They kind of were stuck in a predicament where they're like, man, we're going to run out of cars. So they started building um, vehicles at the factory without microchips in them. You know, it became like cars were sitting until the microchips kind of get in there. Another thing that really bit them in the in the uh, in the rear was the fact that they did just in time production strategy, meaning that as soon as these vehicles came out of the production plan, they were just built, then the microchips would arrive in time and they put it in on the spot. They did this to kind of reduce costs on their inventory. They didn't want to hold a bunch of inventory. Well, in a pandemic, this completely backfired on them. So the fact that they weren't stockpiled with microchips, that they were ordering after there was a huge spike in, in demand for consumer electronics is kind of what started this whole entire thing. Not to mention there was a fire in one of the biggest plants uh, and, and producers of microchips in Taiwan, which you know stunted things for a real long period of time as well. So now what you're seeing is a situation where we might not get back to normal until summer 2022 January 2023, inventory might be really tight, which is why you're seeing a huge increase in used car values. You know, when you consider your trade-in vehicles from a consumer standpoint, you can get a ridiculous amount of money for your trade right now because dealers, people that try to buy these cars and resell them, they can't find them anywhere. You know, you have rental car companies which can't buy these vehicles from manufacturers anymore because they just don't have the supply, so they're holding on to their vehicles longer. Typically, rental companies will sell to these dealers, um, and they're an easy way to kind of get more units on the lot. So it, they're not doing that right now. So all the dealers, all the people that are buying these cars and reselling them are all looking at the same places, and they're all bidding up these cars really high. Well, if you're a consumer with the trade right now, if you can find the vehicle that you want, it's a great time to trade that vehicle in. You know, keep that in mind. I mean, day supply for a dealer right now is kind of crazy. I mean, day supply is basically, if we have 15 cars on the lot, which is like nothing compared to what we usually have, and we sell five cars per day, that's a three-day supply. Typically, dealers are used to a 60 to 90-day supply. So now we're talking about within a week, um, supply. So we have to hope some cars trickle in as we sell these vehicles. And that's kind of what everybody's really going through right now. So the demand for used cars is flying through the roof. So if you do have a trade, like I said, you could find that vehicle that you want. Now's a great time to, to really just, you know, see what your car is worth at the very least. Crazy, crazy times right now. But that's basically the gist of the microchip issue. Um, essentially, 
car manufacturers cut production, consumer electronics started ordering. By the time you know car manufacturers started to order, lead times were crazy long. And that kind of leads us to where we're at right now. And hopefully, like I said, they keep kind of pushing it back summer of 2022. Quarter one, 2023 is kind of when they see it kind of easing and going back to normal. So we'll kind of see and keep you abreast of that situation too. 